Today we're going to be doing some line art with a protractor, a ruler, and some math. Let's get started. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your online art professor. Today we're going to be doing a math project where we're using line illustration and math to create various types of artworks. Now, this is all center and centering around a geometric pattern using geometric design using lines. I had to go in my notes from my math teachers. Rotation, reflection, parabolas, hyper, hyperbolas, hyperbolas, hyper, and transformation. So what does this center around? I've got a grid paper notebook and open this thing up. You guys have probably seen these kinds of designs before. So we're going to start diving into this process. I, I am taking a riff off of this. I did these back when I was in high school. This was my sketchbook uh, from back way back when. Uh, and we did three-dimensional designs. Now, some people in the past, or it's kind of a folk art element, where you'll take a board, take nails, and nail into the board in different, using the board as a coordinate plane and putting the nails in there as specific coordinates on that plane. Then using string to wrap it around to create your design. This is exactly the same thing, uh, except we're just drawing these ones out. Now, this is a great project to do at, either as a sketchbook activity, which is what I like to use them in class, also to get the kids re-familiarized with how to use a ruler which is my number one thing that we're going to do today so starting off with the project let's go ahead and dive into the build so here i've got my grid paper out now what i'm doing on the grid paper is i'm going to mark out 10 dots from the center first off find your center because i didn't i had to do that after step like three so find the center first find the center of your paper we're going to start and have your north south east west coordinates from there now what we're doing is we're doing this along an x-axis and a y-axis remember x is your horizontal y is your vertical from these points what i'm going to do is i'm going to count up 10 spaces to the top 10 spaces out to the left 10 spaces out to the right and 10 spaces out to the south using my ruler i'm now going to start connecting those dots now the dots that we're connecting we're connecting from the outermost point of one side of the, of the cross to the innermost point adjacent to it starting off on if i'm on the y-axis i'm going to go all the way up to 10 first and then connect the 10 line the 10 dot to the one on the x-axis bring that line straight down now what i like to do and i tell my students is this, you're going to walk your ruler the ruler is going to walk down these points so it's going to go from 10 to 1 9 to 2 8 to 3 and so on until you go all the way down and your last one should be 1 to 10 on the x-axis doing it in this in this pattern where you're going from a north to south for me is a lot easier i think that having when i'm drawing lines in general my my arm my hand goes from north to south that's the only way it works i don't do left and right when i'm drawing when i'm drawing lines i do up and down why because i think that this rotation with the wrist is a lot easier to do than this one across because going across like this this tendon is much tighter that's why i don't get the, as much flex as if i'm doing it down like this. this gives me better rotation with my wrist and that's why i do it that way if it's different for you do what works for you that's always always better if whatever works for you guys to get the exact same result it's perfectly fine with me augment find the way that you work best once i've laid out all of my designs here what i've done was using the highlighter so i can make sure that i keep all of those parts separate that's why i'm using the highlighters so that i can make sure that my students understand that there's a difference between the x-axis y-axis that i'm making sure that there are there's a color difference there and then just again finishing these off with a quick sharpie now moving over to the big paper. All right, so now that we have our basic understanding of doing the x-axis and the y-axis, now we wanna bridge that out more. So we've taken the linear straight right angle, I've taken the right angle design, and now we're gonna take that 90 degrees and we're gonna change it to fit the 360. Doing 90 degrees into 360 is gonna give you four different parts. That's the first one that we drew. That gives you this thing. Very simple, very easy, straightforward design. Now you could go around the outside and do kind of them coming back in and do kind of like a frame design around it. That also works, but I want to dress it up and, ch and change the mathematical equation. So the first one I'm going to do is an easy one. So if I take six, divide six into 360, remember 360 is our full rotation around, divide six into that, that gives me 60 degrees of rotation in between each section. So starting off with my protractor, I'm going to place the dot, the center point of where my, my piece starts in the middle dot on the protractor. That's this spot right here. The dot is gonna go in here. Using the lines of the protractor, I'm gonna match that up with the end on the 180 over here so I have a definitive exact point correlating each other 
for my design. So that's why I use this measurement. I'm not using the ruler measurement until later because I want to make sure that all of my angles are correct. This side of your protractor is a ruler measurement. This gives you distance. If I want to get angles, I'm going from the center dot out to the edges over here for my angles. That is important because that will change some of the direction. That will change some of your angles if you don't use the right measurement coordinates. Now, 60 is really simple. You're going north and south. That's going to give you your two dots and then you're taking out 60 degrees so you're taking to the 60 and the 120 and then to the 180 so from 0 60 120 180 then on the other side it'll go to man i was on a roll to, to 240 to 300 and then back to 360 so from zero math it's such a wonderful thing now once i've gotten my sections out there using the ruler now measurement wise i'm going to section out each bar by half an inch. Now you could do larger, smaller, larger. You're gonna have larger blocks inside of it. It's definitely not gonna be as smooth on that transition in the in the uh, between those two segments. So the more spaces that you put in, the smoother the arc is gonna be through there. So that is a design feature you need to think about. But I'm doing a half an inch for each of these. So first things first, I've got all my points done. I've got all of my bars in line. Now I'm putting in all my sections. Then I'll start adding in all of my different components together. Again, you're using the same process. So if you have eight pieces over there, you're gonna to go to eight to one, seven to two, six to three, five to four, and just continue on all the way around until you get all of your pieces lined up. Do that after you've matched all of your pieces, marked all of your pieces. Let's start getting interesting with this. So instead of taking a six, dividing it into 360 we're going to change it to a five so a nice perfect star design now for the five divided into 360 it's going to give you 72 that one's going to be a little more specific we got to look around for just 72. now when i'm using the protractor this time i'm not counting up individual numbers i'm taking it at every 72 degrees so i can make sure that my my dot is matched up properly so again starting with that center point of your protractor putting that in that center point on the design and then counting out the 72 degrees make the mark rotate it around find the 72 again 0 72 so i keep everything consistent i want to give it that because when you're having to add those elements together yes 72 plus 72 is going to give you 144. i don't want to mistake putting it on the wrong side of the of the 45 and put instead of putting it at 44 it's at 46 then it looks slightly weird when you start doing all those lines out now i've got all my five points laid out next i'm going to add two inches to each bar to extend that out a little more make that star a little bigger on my paper make sure that you are being consistent with your time if you stop and you have to start over take that into consideration that you so you get in that repetition that mode uh, I do that all the time. If I'm in the zone and I'm doing something, I really want to finish it straight out that first go, just because it's going to be smoother. We go into super advanced mode which is three-dimensional shapes i'm not i don't have an example of me drawing this one out but i just want to walk you through it you're using the exact same steps i just showed you you're just adding in more math elements so just to give you a basic so if we're doing a square you would do the square just as we did with that first one we're doing a cross the square you're going to measure across the sides and then measure down and you're going from one side over here to this side and you're going to continue to make your lines travel down other side same thing just traveling down and once you start to overlap you're just doing the exact same repetition over and over now once i did this and i want to turn it into the cube and the reason that the cube works so well is because all of these sidebars these side angles right here those all have to be at the same angle of descent going away from the cube getting that perfect three-dimensional cube in there so that's why i have this little drawing down here where i've actually laid out what is the measurements of each of these pieces so on mine 
it was four inches across needed to be two inches of descent back at a 45 degree angle so every 45 all 40 all angles had to be at 45 degrees i matched and did the two squares first then trace around to get the side angles and now i'm having to correct change from this angle over here has to come to this bar over here so you're going to have this twist as it's coming around why is this important well if you're doing perspective and you're trying to get a lot of those lines around this is another tail in perspective this is sometimes a lot more fun for me anyways especially after teaching perspective for so many years i just got bored of it but doing perspective in this way i'm doing the exact same thing as if i was drawing a landscape perspective i'm now having to do a lot more math involved in these pieces and that's a lot more fun for me because it's it challenges my mind to think in a different way and give me a different idea to think about and create different shapes so think about that in the way that you're going to be moving forward in your designs if you want to get more geometric do some more geometric shapes take it under your belt try it out again keep your math straight and if you got a question ask a math teacher i did and uh it helped me out a lot all right but let's go ahead and wrap up class today like we always do don't forget uh i hope you guys had something fun out of today's class i like encouraging you guys to do more math things in the art classroom why because it's more fun i think steam is a great thing and pushing that mentality out on you guys is a wonderful thing for me uh encourage you guys to think about how everything is connected together math um, I, I had a talk with my a couple of math teachers in their math class. We were talking about drones, FAA pilot's license, uh, doing photography, all this stuff. Everything that we talked about, which was art. And everything that I've done in the past, it's all art. But there's so much math that ha that's involved in each one of those things that I think doing more things like that and showing you how these things are incorporated is a very valuable thing. But I didn't want to wrap up class, so let me stop there. First off, again, I hope that you guys got something awesome out of today's class, as I always do. Uh, don't forget to take care of the homework. Just like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get, get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. Educate the masses. That is my goal. So get everybody smarter. Uh, don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern to, during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my class as always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.